this was the most powerful thing I think I've ever heard in my life. Minimized everybody's challenges, anybody's excuse for not finding out the right answer. Like Ben, yesterday, right? What's your question? What's your question? What's your question? Peter Diamandis, who knows Peter Diamandis in here? The X Prize, right? Founder of the X Prize, $10 million, uh, uh, $10 million per pro prize for innovations that advance society. First one was space travel, right? Richard Branson, little known thing, Richard Branson didn't underwrite anything until about a week before the competition was up, okay? And he, he finally underwrote it to put his virgin uh, on the plane for the final test. Um, they've done cars, electric car, goes over 100 miles an hour that you can put into production and as a production car. Does anybody know of a car like that? Tesla, right? Elon Musk. That was, a, that was inspi inspired within that. They are doing a thing where now you can take what looks like a cell phone or your, your smartphone with a little straw on the side, right? Put septum or blood into this and it gives you a board certified diagnosis anywhere there's a wireless connection. $10 million prize. So this is also a guy that has a company that is mining near space asteroids. Trillions of dollars of resources, near space asteroids. So if this guy says that we're only limited by our ability to articulate an effective question, our shit's pretty easy to answer. We just need to figure out the question to ask. Google's a pretty interesting place, right? Ray Kurzweil says that in, in, in the 21st century, we're gonna experience 20,000 years of progress, which means that in 2003, Jesus was born. Like this week, you know, like it's, he died, but this, I mean, so that's what we're talking about, this type of progress. And so questions, I mean, they're just so, you know, if we're able to help our clients ask better questions. And here's Dan Sullivan, strategic coach, another guy, brilliant frameworks, this guy's amazing, that questions are infinitely superior to answers. And what did we say the symbol of value was at the beginning? It was the question mark, right? Usually it's just me with a really stupid look on my face going, <laughs> what the hell am I doing here? The value calling card. This is my business card. It's actually the front and the back of my business card. But we have our questions, we have initial impact questions that we ask every customer that we see, right? And we also frame it to make sure to add perspective that I say to my, you know, I, I hand that card to a chef or somebody, and I say, yeah, you'll see on the back of my card, I've got five questions. 73% of the time when we ask those questions in their entirety, the customer's not using the best available option for their application, i.e. the best, you know, the best or the most cost-effective item for their application. And he's like, yeah, okay. And over the last year, eight years of asking that question, we've saved the restaurant operator over $4 million in annual food costs, over $30 million in total. They're like, Hush, ask me the questions. And then when you get a customer that actually is trained on the questions, what do they do? You can spoil it. What do we do when they get to the five questions? They finish, they finish with the five questions. I want more questions. We ask more questions. Funny story, Lazy Dog Cafe was the one that was up there on, at the beginning of one of the customers. Gabe Caliendo, the chef, calls me up. He goes, hey, man, I want some mahi-mahi for my lunches and my dinners. And I go, okay, I've got questions. He goes, bullshit, man, I got your questions. You know, I have your questions right here. And I'm like, and so he's answering them for me. And he gets to the bottom, and he goes, I want an eight ounce, and I want this, and I'm not using anything right now. And he's kind of going through. He's like a trained customer. I'm like, awesome. And he goes, so what do you got for me? I go, well, I got a couple more questions. He goes, bullshit, man. He goes, I know your game. You're just like, you're, you're making this shit up as you go. I'm like, yeah, he knows me really well. <laughs> and I go, and I go, he goes, and so I just sit there, right? Instead of trying to explain anything, you just let him go. And it's total silence, which feels for like a minute, but it's maybe five seconds. All right, what's your other question? <laughs> do you want an eight ounce serving or do you want an eight ounce portion? Oh, you son of a mother effer, blah, blah, blah. Oh, you're just trying to show off now, blah. Why, what's the difference? 
And I go, eight ounce portion is from a larger fish. Larger mahi throughout the year can be less attainable. And so the price can go up faster than other sizes of mahi. But two four ounce center cut portions that we only produce at our processing plant here in Southern California, you can actually stack. You can have elevation to the plate, which always leads to more value when people are doing a greater creativity. I go and they usually run about 60 cents a pound less. Now I haven't told him what the price is of either one. He goes, oh, send me the four ounce. That was it, right? But it was about asking more questions, about owning that language, right? I mean, people go, dumbass, why are you putting these questions on the back of your card? And people steal it. And I'm like, well, they don't know what the next five questions are. It doesn't keep people from stealing it, though. I'm yeah? Thinking, so what's the difference between portion and the other one? Portion and a serving? Yeah. Two four-ounce portions is an eight-ounce serving. Oh, got it, got it. Right? So remember I said $56 billion corporation? I went to Cisco Corporate in Houston before I was talking to Ray or Roy on the phone. I walk in and they have this smile on their face. They go, hey, we have a new training program. We're training 8,800 sales reps across the country, our MAs. They call them marketing associates. I go, congratulations. They hand me the packet. Those are my questions. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, well, how about a little thing for the house here? And they're like, you know, we're going to consider this contribution <laughs> when we're making our next bid, you know, awards. I'm just like, the two words thing came up again. But what's funny is, what is the most important thing here you would think after these questions are asked? Ghostbusters. Who are you going to call? They should know. Those sales reps should know. I didn't put that as a slide, but your customer should never know shit unless you show them. Okay? And so they ask these questions, and notice that they made them into six questions, but they're the same. And take a picture. Where do you send it? Take a picture. Send to Solution at International Pacific. The question on the back of the card is, what are you using now? Uh, by the way, does anybody want a card? No? That would be great. Yeah. Okay. I'll give you one. I mean, you don't have to say yes if you don't want it. <laughs> but, uh, um, but the... Uh, um, what are you using now? What are you doing with it, which is the most critical part of this thing, right? How are you preparing it, how are you making it? But think about how you would use this in your business. What are you doing with it? How much of it are you using? Like a week, like for fish, right? It's the last hunted food of man. So if like all of a sudden there's a shortage of mahi-mahi, which there is, right? Or a shortage of squid, which there is. And somebody goes, I wanna use 100,000 pounds a week. It's like, yeah, well. You know, if, if ifs and buts were candies and nuts, we'd all have a Merry Christmas. But it was just, it's, it's just not, you're not gonna get it, right? So how much are you using now? So we go, but how much of what you have from me, how much of the coaching program are you actually applying, right? I mean, getting to that, right? And then where did you get it? What program are you using? Well, I'm using the one from Joe Dickett. No, <laughs> okay, he's not very good. And then how much did you pay for it, right? How much did you pay for it? We all know, you know, the, so these questions, it's funny, I gave it to David Bach. Does he, anybody know who David Bach is? Author, wrote the Finish Rich series. So like, you know, start late, finish rich, you know, all, 12 New York Times bestseller. He goes, what the hell are these? I go, those are the five initial impact questions that I have that I ask all my customers. He's like, oh my God, this is genius. I'm like, I'm a little freaked out by that word. They go, uh, he goes, can I put mine on the back of my card? I'm like, yes. I'm like, <laughs> like, <what? laughs> like, yes. I did, I, you know, I'm a fish guy, right? But I'm not really a fish guy, but I, you know, like that's my disguise. Back in 2014, I got invited to be the final keynote speaker to the Certified Angus Beef Conference. Certified Angus Beef is like this marketing company that just represents the finest of the the highest percentage of great quality beef, and they are fantastic. I was the final keynote speaker, a fish guy speaking to beef guys, right? <laughs> Talking about the card. Everybody's like, God, the card. It's like, you know, when you look at the questions, you go, yeah, no shit, everybody should be asking these questions, right? How many people are shooting all over themselves? 
You know, it's just, this is, these are so basic, but they're the initial impact questions that set our entire relationship together, and they have nothing to do with seafood and everything to do with the customer and where we are with the customer, with the starting point with the customer, recognizing their threshold for quality, their recognition of even what's going on in the world is the initial impact questions. And those are important, and we're gonna talk about them later as well.